Welcome pre-AP chemistry to your second experience with a flipped curriculum and I hope this one turns out as well as the last one did because you did a great job on your tests. We are from Allen High School and this is a copyright, neglected to write that in, copyright 2011. Now. We are studying the atom right now in this unit we're going to give you an introduction and then in the next unit we'll get into the models that we have that have been developed to help us understand the atom we're going to start with a very brief when i say brief i mean brief a brief history of the periodic table i like to do this because it gives you an indication of how ideas are floated out there into the community of the scientific community and then how those ideas are altered uh, over time as new experiments are done so brief history i like to call this the dead guys section we're going to come across a few dead guys that and it's important to understand their contributions to the conversation so let's start with dobereiner and what you want to do when you're reading something like this, because this is the identification level. If you look at your objectives that are on the first page of your notes, you'll see that we've listed that you need to identify the people and their key contributions. That's a lower order thinking skill. What that means is you, you need to memorize these little guys, okay? Now, just like you did in your activity where you were seeking out patterns and trends, that's what he did. And he noticed that there were some triads of elements. Remember, not all the elements were known at that point. Some triads that seemed to behave very similarly. So there seemed to be a relationship between the properties and their atomic masses. And this was our first glimpse into the concepts of groups or families of evidence. Now, we want to remind you, hopefully you've had this at previous levels, these are the columns in the periodic table. will ultimately develop into what we have as our columns of groups and families. And they're not identical, just like brothers and sisters aren't identical, but there are definite similarities. Now the next guy is Newlands, and he came up with an arrangement of elements according to atomic mass, and he noticed kind of a cyclical property that every eighth element seemed to rewind upon itself. And we also wanted you to point out he's got such a cute little beard there, this little guy. There we go. Now, uh, that's one of the things you want to see is how the progression uh, emerged as each scientist uh, thought through it and made his or her contribution. And notice the difference in time frame between these, 1817, 1865. Er, you do not have to memorize those dates. That's not what we're after. We're after the, our progression of understanding. Now, I think the most uh, pop, not popular, most well-known person in this list would be Mendeleev and you'll hear him quite a bit. And now, I mean, talk about beards, look at that one. Now, about 1870, he arranged the periodic table completely according to atomic mass. Uh, Newlands just saw that pattern that seemed to cycle around, whereas Mendeleev actually arranged it, and this provided the foundation. So this spurred some, some thinking is, is the periodic table, can we really arrange these according to atomic mass? Because if we can find a framework to understand, and if we can link within that framework uh, things that have similar physical properties and similar chemical properties, we would have a very, very powerful tool. Now, we're going to see that this is tweaked, but it provided a wonderful, wonderful, excellent uh, springboard for the next group of dead guys. So let's see the next one. Mosley is another well-known one that you should know his name. So like I said, you have to memorize these guys' names. You should highlight them and find some sort of mnemonic device for learning this. And he did some research on Mendeleev, and this was about 1913, 
And he realized that if we went by atomic number instead of atomic mass, that there were some things that didn't make sense that suddenly fell into place. Now, we are going to uh, come back to this later on, but as a reminder, atomic number is our number of protons. And I think you have that from prior knowledge. If not, it's the number of positively charged particles in the nucleus. Okay? And then the mass, we'll see, is going to be the sum, sort of, of our protons plus neutrons, sort of. <laughs> You'll see what I mean by the time we're done. All right, there's a little bit of a nuance to that. That's not quite a true statement there, but it gives you an indicator. Now, the next guy is a little bit more of a contemporary. I mean, he was even alive when I was in graduate school. Okay, yeah, I know I'm old. So contemporary mine is not necessarily a contemporary of yours, but his name is Glenn Seaborg. And he actually has an element named after him. He uh, uncovered quite a few unique elements. So element 106, I, I forget what we're up to, something like 119 or something like that elements and he came up with uh, he had one named after him and we call that seaborgium now what he did is he came he had this idea of these two periods that we're going to see in just a minute called the lanthanides and actinides and he really pulled together most of those he synthesized most of those and not only did he synthesize them but he suggested pulling them out of the periodic table. I'm gonna show you a picture of that in just a minute. People thought he was kind of crazy when he suggested this, but it really makes a lot of sense. Not only that, it's a lot easier to squeeze that whole periodic table onto one piece of paper. So you want to make sure you're circling, highlighting, finding a way that your mind can wrap around these concepts. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go into a little bit more about that periodic table. Uh, but for now, I just want to leave you with this final picture of what the expanded periodic table would look like. And normally, you see this squished together with this back to back. All right. And these are the lanthanide and actinides that Seaborg was talking about. And what he suggested is, you know what, let's pull this down and you'll understand this whole SPDF thing by unit five. So don't worry about that part yet. But he said, let's pull these down and then let's move these together. And that's indeed how we typically show the periodic table today. Now, one last thing on this picture, this shows an older numbering scheme where we use A's and B's. The newer numbering scheme, numbers one, two, and this would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, this would be 13, and this would be 18. Okay, so you'll see both of those, although the one in the classroom shows, I believe the one on your test too, shows the one through 18 scheme. All right, we'll continue this conversation in our next video.